As former White House chief strategist, believe it or not, Steve Bannon, in a big interview coming on tonight at 10 o'clock on MS with MSNBC's Ari Melber, who's sitting in for Lawrence O'Donnell. Steve Bannon was a leading force, of course, in Trump's presidential campaign and in the early months of his administration as well, pushing a nationalist agenda. It's called America First. Remember that approach, meaning tougher trade policies, rebuilding the infrastructure of this country, keeping the country out of stupid wars. But now, 18 months into his presidency, we face an unsettled trade situation with Trump, a non-existent infrastructure plan to rebuild the country, and all this saber rattling at countries like Iran that could bring us closer to new wars. So what happened to Trump's agenda that looked attractive to a little bit, to some people a little bit? who are smart a little bit. Joining us right now is the anchor of Beat, The Beat. Great name for his show, Ari Melber. Ari, I, I really wanted you to come on the show because I'm thinking when, when this guy Bannon was first out there, a lot of it was awful. He seemed too far right, too, not fascistic, but something scary about him, this nationalist thing. But there, around the edges were things that were attractive to people. And there were things like no more stupid wars. We're going to look at it for ourselves in terms of economic deals. And we're going to rebuild this country, not worried about the electric grid in Afghanistan. We're going to rebuild stuff here. I don't see that. I see a guy saber rattling. I see a guy in Trump. I see a guy who's arguing with Manigold and Amorose and all these stupid intramural fights. I don't see the guy pursuing rebuilding the country for one, staying out of stupid wars, secondly. I, I don't see that. I, I Has think this guy lost his influence? Well, he's out. He's on the outs and he's trying to claw his way back in by spending money this week. And so some of the things we talk about in this interview that, as you mentioned, is airing later, but I'll get into some of it was, how do you say that Donald Trump's for the working class when 83 percent of the tax bill benefits go to the top one percent? What's he say? And how do you deal with an infrastructure bill that he said was going to get passed and did it? Because he spent with, all the money on tax cuts for the rich. And how do you deal with Wall Street and say you're going to take them on when you won't release who your donors are because you have a secret organization under the laws that doesn't force their disclosure? So let's, let's we take get a look into at all that. I think you're going to give me a piece. Let's take a look at your interview tonight, a little tease. We do not want to isolate America. We got the wrong thing up there. I don't know. We're going to have to wait. I got That was frustrating. Let's go. That was Pat Buchanan. This up or down vote on President Trump. You know, this is this election is going to come as a referendum on him. He permeates the entire political culture. And I think those that are uh, around him are telling him that, hey, it's OK to lose the House. You can work with the Democrats and you can run against a Democratic uh, House in 2020. It's bad advice. OK, that's a political point. I think it's a good one. He's uh, Trump's floating around the idea, at least it comes out of him. I can lose the House. They don't blame everything on Pelosi or the Democrats or, you know, anybody else. And this guy says, wait a minute, you lose the House, you lose the subpoena power and the House, they can come get you like they got Nixon. This is where the Republicans are clearly in a divide. Some call it a civil war. Bannon says he wants to be at war with the left. But you have folks in Washington around Trump and down the Hill, McConnell, who basically are privately saying that the House is, is written off and they'll deal with it. And then you have the hardcore guys. I mean, Bannon is someone who, whether you like him or not, a lot of people don't. He was the guy who backed up Trump after Access Hollywood, which a lot of people thought was disgusting. But then they did go on to win in November. So do you want to have a politics where we actually confront and expose and see what they're doing? He wants this to be no holds bar and say impeachment and Trump is on the table. We also talked about the Time's Up movement, which he said is very powerful. He talked about his daughter who's in the military and what it means. And I pressed him on that. And how can you square that with your support for Roy Moore? Uh, and he talked about patriarchy. And I said, well, if it's time to change gender relations in this country, if we're going to have gender equality, then don't you have to take on the patriarchy? So this is a person who, while clearly reviled, and I, I addressed that with him, and we talk Charlottesville as well, is also getting in in ways that some other conservatives aren't. When he talks about these movements, these candidates, the economy, Wall Street, he's trying to push this conversation right now, even as Donald Trump says they're not buddies. Well, I think people have to listen to him. And I, th I congratulate you on getting him on because people on the progressive side of things, people on the center left where I'm sort of at, I think need to hear this other side. They got to hear it again and again. It's not going to change anybody's minds, but people want to hear it because you got to know what you're up against. Thank you, Chris. Thank and you and on that, I mean, in 2016, some people were caught by surprise because we weren't listening to everything. You know, we all thought Hillary Clinton was going to win right up until about 8.30 election night because people kept saying, oh, she's going to win, she's going to win. There's not enough angry white people out there. We're a hell of a lot of angry white people like this guy. Thank you, Ari Melbourne. Thank Great you, sir. Great program to have you on tonight. Ari's full interview, as I said, with Steve Bannon airs tonight at 10 Eastern right here on MSNBC. Big night, by the way, because Rachel, of course, Rachel Maddow's got uh, John Brennan on tonight, and he's right in the middle of the news. 
there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.